Meditations for the Christian Grace Ephesians 2 verses 8 and 9 For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Ephesians 2 verses 8 and 9 Faith and Works, page 27 By grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourself. It is the gift of God. Here is truth that will unfold the subject to your mind if you do not close it to the rays of light. Eternal life is an infinite gift. This places it outside the possibility of our earning it because it is infinite. It must necessarily be a gift. As a gift, it must be received by faith, and gratitude and praise be offered to God. Faith and Works, page 27. Titus 2, verse 11. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men. Titus 2, verse 11. Romans 3, verse 24. Being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Romans 3, verse 24. 2 Corinthians 12, verse 9. And He said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, Therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. 2 Corinthians 12, verse 9 Faith I Live By, page 96 Our precious Savior has invited us to join ourselves to Him and unite our weakness with His strength, our ignorance with His wisdom, our unworthiness with His merit. Rigid precision in obeying the law would entitle no man to enter the kingdom of heaven. There must be a new birth, a new mind through the operation of the Spirit of God, which purifies the life and ennobles the character. This connection with God fits man for the glorious kingdom of heaven. No human invention can ever find a remedy for the sinning soul. There must be a power working from within, a new life from above, before men can be changed from sin to holiness. That power is Christ. His grace alone can quicken the lifeless faculties of the soul and attract it to God, to holiness. The idea that it is necessary only to develop the good that exists in man by nature is a fatal deception. The natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. 1 Corinthians 2, verse 14. Of Christ it is written, In him was life, and the life was the light of men, the only name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. John 1, verse 4, and Acts 4, verse 12. Paul the Apostle longed for the purity, the righteousness, to which in himself he was powerless to attain. And he cried out, O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this body of death? Romans 7, verse 24. Such is the cry that has gone up from the burdened heart in all lands and in all ages. To all there is but one answer. Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. John 1, verse 29. Faith I Live By, page 96. 1 Peter 5, verse 10. But the God of all grace, who hath called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that ye have suffered a while, make you perfect. Establish, strengthen, settle you. 1 Peter 5, verse 10. Amazing Grace, page 324. When the truth is received, it will work radical changes in life and character 
for religion means the abiding of Christ in the heart, and where he is, the soul goes on in spiritual activity, ever growing in grace, ever growing on to perfection. It is no real evidence that you are a Christian because your emotion is stirred, your spirit stirred by truth. The question is, are you growing up into Christ, your living head? Is the grace of Christ manifested in your life? God gives his grace to men that they may desire more of his grace. God's grace is ever working upon the human heart, and when it is received, the evidence of its reception will appear in the life and character of its recipient. The grace of Christ in the heart will always promote spiritual life, and spiritual advancement will be made. We do not see the plants grow in the field, and yet we are assured that they do grow. And may we not know of our own spiritual strength and growth? Amazing Grace, page 324. Ephesians 2, verse 5. Even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ. By grace are ye saved. Ephesians 2, verse 5. To be like Jesus, page 44. There are but two classes in our world, the obedient and the disobedient, the holy and the unholy. When our transgressions were laid upon Jesus, he was numbered among the unholy on the sinner's account. He became our substitute, our surety, before the Father and all the heavenly angels. By imputing the sins of the world to Jesus, he became the sinner in our stead. And the curse due to our sins came upon him. It becomes to us to contemplate Christ's life of humiliation and his agonizing death, for he was treated as the sinner deserves to be treated. He came to our world clothing his divinity with humanity, to bear the test and proving of God. By his example of perfect obedience in his human nature, he teaches us that we may be obedient. And the Apostle writes, Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord, according as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. It is here plainly revealed that all who believe in Jesus Christ become partakers of the divine nature. Let divinity and humanity cooperate, and fallen human beings may be more than conquerors through Christ Jesus. Be like Jesus, page 44. Romans 11, verse 6. And if by grace, then it is no more of works, otherwise grace is no more grace, but if it be of works, then it is no more grace. Otherwise, work is no more work. Romans 11, verse 6. Titus 3, verse 7. That being justified by grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. Amazing Grace, page 278. Every earnest petition for grace and strength will be answered. Ask God to do for you those things that you cannot do for yourselves. Tell Jesus everything. Lay open before him the secrets of your heart, for his eye searches the inmost recesses of the soul, and he reads your thoughts as an open book. When you have asked for the things that are necessary for your soul's good, believe that you receive them, and ye shall have them. Accept his gifts with your whole heart, for Jesus has died that you might have the precious things of heaven as your own. Amazing Grace, page 278. John 1, verse 17. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. John 1, verse 17. Romans 5, verse 2. By whom also ye have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Romans 5, verse 2. First Selected Messages, page 394. Abundant grace has been provided that the believing soul may be kept free from sin, 
for all heaven with its limitless resources has been placed at our command. We are to draw from the well of salvation. Christ is the end of law for righteousness to everyone who believeth. In ourselves we are sinners, but in Christ we are righteous, having made us righteous through the imputed righteousness of Christ. God pronounces us just and treats us as just. He looks upon us as his dear children. Christ works against the power of sin, and where sin abounded, grace much more abounds. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Romans 5, verses 1 and 2. First Selected Messages, page 394. Hebrews 11, verse 6. But without faith it is impossible to please him, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Hebrews 11, verse 6. 2 Timothy 1, verse 9. Who hath saved us and called us with an holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. 2 Timothy 1, verse 9. 5 B.C. 1122. Our acceptance with God is sure only through His beloved Son, and good works are but the result of the working of His sin-pardoning love. They are no credit to us, and we have nothing accorded to us for our good works by which we may claim a part in the salvation of our souls. Salvation is God's free gift to the believer, given to him for Christ's sake alone. The troubled soul may find peace through faith in Christ, and his peace will be in proportion to his faith and trust. He cannot present his good works as a plea for the salvation of his soul. But are good works of no real value? Is the sinner who commits sin every day with impunity regarded of God with the same favor as the one through whom faith in Christ tries to work in his integrity? The scripture answers, We are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. In his divine arrangement, through his unmerited favor, the Lord has ordained that good works shall be rewarded. We are accepted through Christ's merit alone, and the acts of mercy, the deeds of charity, which we perform, are the fruits of faith and they become a blessing to us, for men are to be rewarded according to their works. It is the fragrance of the merit of Christ that makes our good works acceptable to God, and it is grace that enables us to do the works for which he rewards us. Our works in and of themselves have no merit. When we have done all that it is possible for us to do, we are to count ourselves as unprofitable servants. We deserve no thanks from God. We have only done that which was our duty to do, and our works could not have been performed in the strength of our own sinful natures. B.C. Volume 5, page 1122. Ephesians 1, verse 7. In whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of of his grace. Faith I Live By, page 107. The grace of Christ is freely to justify the sinner without merit or claim on his part. Justification is a full, complete pardon of sin. The moment a sinner accepts Christ by faith, that moment he is pardoned. The righteousness of Christ is imputed to him, and he is no more to doubt God's forgiving grace. There is nothing in faith that makes it our Savior. Faith cannot remove our guilt. Christ is the power of God unto salvation to all them that believe. The justification comes through the merit of Jesus Christ. He has paid the price for the sinner's redemption. Yet it is only through faith in his blood that Jesus can justify the believer. 
The sinner cannot depend upon his own good works as a means of justification. He must come to the point where he will renounce all his sins and embrace one degree of light after another as it shines upon his pathway. He simply grasps by faith the free and ample provision made in the blood of Christ. He believes the promises of God which through Christ are made unto him sanctification and righteousness and redemption. And if he follows Jesus, he will walk humbly in the light, rejoicing in the light, and diffusing that light to others. Let the repenting sinner fix his eyes upon the Lamb which taketh away the sin of the world. When we see Jesus, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, working to save the lost, slighted, scorned, derided, driven from city to city till his mission was accomplished, when we behold him in Gethsemane, sweating great drops of blood, and on the cross dying in agony, when we see this, self will no longer clamor to be recognized. Looking unto Jesus, we shall be ashamed of our coldness, our lethargy, our self-seeking. We shall be willing to be anything or nothing, so that we may do heart service for the Master. We shall rejoice to bear the cross after Jesus, to endure the trial, shame, or persecution for his dear sake.